Have you ever wondered what God's purpose for artists is? What is his purpose for the creations that they're making, for their art? That's what I want to talk about today. Why did God create you? Why did God give you the talent and the inspiration to make the things that you make? And what is his purpose for it? What is up internet? I am Ed and like I said in the intro today I want to talk about God's purpose for you as an artist, his purpose for your art and why he created you and gave you the talents that he gave to you. You see sometimes as Christians I think that we forget that we can have other talents that aren't directly associated with the church. Sometimes when we talk about art or creativity we think about worship music and we think about things that are directly involved with the altar and directly involved with the service now don't get me wrong that's all fine that's great worship musicians are artists in their own right the people who run plays in churches of artists in their own right the people who do all of these creative things at church they are artists as well but today i'm talking about all of you creators who aren't necessarily up on the altar all of you artists who aren't necessarily playing worship music Today I want to talk about you guys who are painters, photographers, filmmakers, poets, writers. What purpose does God have for your life? What purpose does God have for your art, for your creations? Why did God create you with that talent? Well, it's very simple. If we look at Exodus 31, we're going to take a look at, well, basically what the purpose of art is when it comes to God's eyes. You see, in Exodus 31, they're talking about the building of the tabernacle. And God is speaking to Moses and telling him about a man that he gave all of the inspiration, all the talent, all of the knowledge and wisdom to do all of the things needed to do to build the tabernacle. And not just build it, but to make it beautiful. It says in Exodus 31 that God gave him all of the inspiration and creativity to make everything from things with stones, things with wood. It says that he even gave him the ability to make the clothing for the people that are going to be in the tabernacle. So he inspired this man. He gave him all of the inspiration and all the knowledge. Now, how is this speaking about us as artists or creators or makers? Well, it's pretty simple. Obviously, he gave him this inspiration to build up the tabernacle, which means he gave this man this inspiration. For what? For the purpose of making God's kingdom greater, of glorifying him. That's what the point of the tabernacle was, to glorify God, for God's spirit to reside within it. So God, in his infinite wisdom, created artists. He gave creativity. He made makers, creators in order for them to make things where God's glory and presence presides. I know, it's kind of a heavy thing to think about as your purpose, right? As the reason for you being. But the reality is it is. Whatever it is you do as an art, whatever it is you create, the purpose of that creation is simple. It's to make something where God's glory presides, where God's glory lives. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Ed, how do I do that? I just paint. How can God live within my paintings? I'm not even like a realistic painter. I don't paint like Monet. I paint like, like Jackson Pollock. It doesn't matter. You see, one of the beautiful things about painting in particular, to use that as an example, is the fact that when you paint, you let your spirit, you let your heart speak. And when your heart and your spirit is full of God and his word, and if he's speaking to you, then what is going to flow out of you is going to be God's essence. So it doesn't matter the type of painting you do. It doesn't mean if it matter if it's realistic. It doesn't even matter if it's abstract, modernist painting. It doesn't matter if you paint like Van Gogh or Jackson Pollock or Monet. It doesn't matter what flows out of you. What is created when that paint flows out comes onto the canvas, that is God's essence presiding within that art, on that canvas, because what has flown out of you is what God has inspired you to do. In poetry, it's the same way. What you write should be something that is inspired by God. What comes out of you is going to be what is within you, and if God is within you, then that's what's going to speak. 
I know that it seems like an oversimplification, but that's the reality. As artists, as creators, our purpose is to glorify God. Our purpose is to create something where God's glory resides. Now, does that mean you need to make explicitly Christian content or explicit, explicitly Christian art? Does it mean that you need to paint the face of Jesus or paint angels? Does it mean that your poetry needs to directly speak about God and who he is? Not necessarily. It's about what you're speaking, not what is explicitly spoken. Like I said, if you paint whatever flows out, as long as what's flowing is the Spirit of God within you, then that's fine. As a writer, you might not explicitly say the words God in any of your writings, but if what you're writing glorifies what he's taught you, if what you're writing tells what he has spoken to you, if what you're writing expresses what you have learned through your meditation and study of God's words, then you don't need to express it explicitly say God's name within it, or for it to explicitly be a poem about the Bible, or about a story of the Bible, or anything like that. If you write a song, it doesn't necessarily need to say the word Jehovah, or Christ, or God continuously. There are many beautiful songs that don't, that don't say the word God within them. And there are a lot of people who are going to hate on those songs and a lot of people who are going to hate on this opinion. But the reality is that you could write a song that speaks to everything that God has said. That speaks exactly about his message and who he is. That speaks about his love. That speaks about what he does for us. And that's still God residing within that song. You can make a short film or a full-length film that doesn't necessarily have to do with Christian topics. Where your characters might not be the model Christian. But if the message that's being given is the same message that he's given to you, then that's all that matters. God's purpose for you, God's purpose for your art is that simple. It's for you to send a message. And I know, once again, that that seems very simplified because of course, what is the purpose of art to express a message? But for an artist, a creator, a maker, who considers themselves a follower of Christ, who considers themselves a believer, a Christian, if you will, the message that we must put across is the message of God's glory and God's love within our lives. Now, that's not always going to look pretty because to receive God's love, to get to his glory, there needs to sometimes be darkness. All great art expresses darkness in the way, same way that it expresses light. So it's okay if your painting doesn't seem like it's full of joy and happiness at the beginning. It's okay if your writing starts off with pain. It's okay if your movie expresses pain or shows people going through pain and situations that are not the best of the best. Because to receive his glory, we sometimes have to go to, through pain. To get to the light, you have to come out of the darkness. To see the bright blue sky, the storm first needs to clear. So I'm not here to tell you what you need to write, what you need to make. I'm not here to tell you that the content or the type of art that you're making is incorrect. I'm here to just tell you that God's purpose for your art, God's purpose for you as an artist is to create things where God's glory resides. To create things where his message, his love, what God has spoken and done for you is expressed. Be that through paint, be that through the pen on the paper, be that through the lens of a camera. God's purpose for you as an artist is to create. And it doesn't mean that you need to be up on the altar but it does mean that you need to speak what he has spoken to you through your art. I hope that you guys have liked this. I know that it was probably pretty obvious, but maybe some of you needed to hear this. Maybe you are like me who said, my art isn't on the podium, 
what I do isn't up on the altar, so how can I do it? And if I need to do everything for God, does that mean I can no longer be an artist? Well, no. I hope that this has shown you that all it means is that your art needs to express what he has spoken to you and what he's done to you. That your art needs to reflect his love through whatever medium you choose to use. And if you like this, I hope you did, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, that's fine. Give it a thumbs down if you want. That's totally up to you. But if you didn't like it, why don't you leave me a comment down below so I can know what I can do better, what I can change so that maybe you do like this or what I can change simply, simply to make this a better video and a better channel to make better content for you guys. Subscribe so I can give you guys more content like this. I'm gonna keep talking about theology and art. I'm gonna be talking about movies music, the messages behind movies that we can learn. And we're going to talk about painting, poetry, and all of that stuff here. Subscribe so you can get more content like this and content about all types of stuff, even the history behind the Bible. Thank you guys for watching this, even though uh, it's probably just people I know. But even if I know you, thanks for watching this and supporting me. And if I don't know you, thank you even more because I don't know you and you decided to watch this video about me just rambling on about art and God. So thank you guys. Have a great day. God bless you and go out and create.